So today I actually wanted to test something that I thought was interesting. You might not think so, but uh, here we are. I wanted to see if you can actually game when your P cores are disabled. So meaning only on the E cores. Now, just a quick uh, disclaimer. I'm not able to disable all the P cores via BIOS. So I just had to do it via Windows Task Manager. I just set the affinity to the E cores and uh, none to the P cores. Right, so here we have a Robocop Rogue City and we're getting around 120 frames per second here currently. So we'll be moving around a little bit in the in a moment. I just wanted to go through the specs quickly. So we've got an RTX 4070 Super that is paired with a 14600K of CPU and that again is paired with DDR5 6400 megatransfers per second CL32 memory. Now Robocop is not a very CPU intensive title but it is an Unreal Engine 5 title and yeah you can see our GPS is just still sitting at around 98% and as soon as there's a lot of action on the screen it actually does drop below 80% uh, even. The settings I'm using here is just 1440p on the high preset with the LSS set to quality no frame generation enabled at all because uh, frame generation does medicate uh, some uh, CPU uh, bottlenecks and I just wanted to see what the raw performance of these e cores are. Now just the, for those of you who are not aware the e cores are just efficiency cores on the latest 12th, uh, 13th and 14th gen CPUs some of them anyway and uh, it's basically lower powered cores with lower clock speeds and it's it actually was conceptualized to help with background tasks but lately it actually does help with uh, gaming as well it does take a little bit of load from from the game itself and uh, now i'm just hiding around the player sorry i'm uh, recording a voice over recording here because my recording for some reason did not uh, work my microphone defaulted to another headset here or another microphone anyway um you can see our gpu power is not nearly as much as it should be we typically draw around 200 watts uh, on this gpu and here we are sitting at around uh, 190 watt 170 watt even at times and it's actually it's not terrible but obviously the performance can be improved here but um, i was expecting a slightly worse performance all right let's move on to the next one all right and next up we've got remnant two now uh, sorry i did not record uh, the first uh, with the p cores enabled for robocop and for remnant but i did for the other games sorry about that um I, I don't know why I did not record before and after, but uh, yeah, you can see we're getting around 70, 80 frames per second. Uh, all the settings that I'm using is on the screen right now. So you can see our GPS is just sitting once again at around uh, 70%. With the P cores enabled, it does hover around 96% and we get around 120 frames per second with these uh, settings when the P cores are enabled. So we we lost around 40 frames per second here not the end of the world the game is still plenty playable but our what 0.1 percent lows are actually suffering quite a bit and i did run around in this area before i started recording just to prevent any shadow compilation stutter as well but unfortunately the e cores are just not enough to to prevent uh, stuttering the game does have its occasional stutter here and there but definitely not as bad as we could see here. Now I actually just wanted to enable frame generation as well as you can see. Just wanted to see what uh, kind of difference it makes and you can see we basically doubled our frame rate here. So if you if you remember frame generation can actually double your frame rate when you are heavily CPU bound and that was the case here. We were sitting with the 60-70% yeah, GPU usage meaning we were very CPU bound and we basically doubled our frame rate. So that's uh, that's where frame generation is actually very handy. I just wanted to showcase that. Uh, this has nothing to do with uh, my testing. Not that any of this testing has any real world advantages. I was just curious to see if it would be possible. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, and next up we've got what I consider to be one of the most unoptimized games <laughs> ever uh, i'll be making a full video on this game but uh, we are running here at 1440p on the medium preset but the ls is set to balanced and we are not able to maintain 60 frames per second sure it's at a, around 60 frames per second now but it does a drop below 60 frames per second just walking around here just to give you an idea that you see dipping below 60 there this is just a, a horribly optimized game all right let's see what happens once we actually disable the p cause here 
All right, so we did not lose that much. We went from around 60 frames per second to uh, 52, 53 frames per second. Let's just uh, start our metrics here. Uh, this guy actually attacked me whilst I was trying to <laughs> change the settings or the affinity of the, the cores. Anyway, you can see, like, even though we did not lose that much, the frame time graph is very inconsistent. Not much worse than it was, but definitely more noticeable. The stuttering over here, you can see, is just horrible. Our 0.1% uh, lows are dipped into uh, the tens there, 10 frames per second for the 0.1% lows. And uh, I mean, you do see that every now and again, even with the P cores enabled, but uh, with the E cores uh, only, at the performance is just horrible. Once again, don't play your games like this. Uh, this was just a silly fun project. I just wanted to see if it would be possible. All right, uh, let's move on to the next one. All right, next up we've got Counter Strike 2, and uh, look at that. Uh, get killed in the process of killing a guy. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We are getting around 370 frames per second. Yeah, you'll see that our GPU usage does go up and down quite a bit. The game is uh, is very CPU dependent. Not really that much CPU demanding like the previous one. It is definitely more demanding on the GPU than uh, Counter Strike Go. Anyway, getting around uh, well between 350 and 400 frames per second here. So let's see what happens once we actually disable the P cores here. Right, so now with the P cores disabled, we are dropping below 200 frames per second, even 160 frames per second there. My skill has increased quite considerably. I mean, just landed two headshots there with this uh, pistol. Uh, anyway, I lost quite a bit of performance. Uh, went from 370 frames per second to 170 frames per second. It does go up to around 200 at times. Definitely still not bad, like... Uh, except for the stuttering. And that's exactly why 1% and 0.1% low metrics are very important. We are getting an average of 200 frames per second, but the game I'd say is basically unplayable just because of uh, all the stuttering here. And uh, actually my skill, <laughs> It did not increase that much. Uh, that was just uh, placebo. Anyway, so getting around 200 frames per second, but our 0.1% lows are sitting at 13 frames per second. So definitely, definitely not the way it should be playing Counter Strike. All right, let's move on to the next one. So the next one is Cyberpunk 2077. Here we are running at 1440p on the high preset, but the LS is set to quality, no frame generation. Basically, realistic playing settings. This is how I play the game, just with frame generation enabled. But for these tests, we disable frame generation. We're getting around 115 frames per second yet. So let's see what happens once we disable the P cores. And uh, spoiler alert, it's completely unplayable. This is not uh, YouTube hitching. There's nothing wrong with the video. This is just the, the game. <laughs> you can see our 1% lows and 0.1% lows are sitting at a 1 frames per second. They're dipping into 0 frames per second at times, 2 frames per second, whatever. Anyway, they're definitely an unplayable experience, so let's move on to the next one. Now, Dragon's Dogma 2 is extremely CPU heavy, especially in the cities. It uh, runs horribly, even <laughs> at the best of times. You can see we, we're not even able to maintain 60 frames per second. It uh, drops below 60 into the mid 50s at times. Just look at the frame time graph. It's, uh, it's very inconsistent and the game is very, very distracting or the, the gameplay this way is very distracting in the cities at least. And a lot of quests actually do happen in the city and I'm I'm a little bit disappointed in this game because we haven't seen any CPU performance uh, patches yet. And uh, so <laughs> I do not have any hope of it uh, for this game uh, by just disabling the P cores here. But let's go ahead and see what happens. All right, so we had around 70 frames per second in this specific area before I disabled the P cores. And now you can see <laughs> uh, we're dropping into the, the 30s here. Uh, my, my laugh is not uh, smirking. I'm, I'm really just having fun uh, i do find it uh, very funny just to see like um uh, this is completely expected right so i'm not saying anybody should play like this and the performance is not unexpected or shocking to me i really just <laughs> i just enjoy this and i have a lot of fun yeah and uh, you can see our 0.1 percent lows are sitting at eight frames per second here and our average frame rate basically halved right so <laughs> uh Interesting result, but uh, not unexpected at all. Right, uh, let's move on to the next one. Right, and next up we've got Pal World running at 1440p high with the LSS set to quality. And in this specific scene, we're getting around 174 frames per second, 173. So I just wanted to show you that and uh, let's disable the P cores. 
And now we've lost around 30 frames per second, which is a lot less than I was actually expecting, seeing that this is uh, another Unreal Engine 5 title. The stuttering is a lot worse though. Even with the vehicles enabled, there is quite a bit of stuttering in this game. Shadow compilation stutters. Uh, it actually does, uh, you know it's shadow compilation stutters because as soon as something new actually appears on the screen, it'll stutter. And then there's some traversal stutter as well. Anyway, uh, getting around 100 frames per second here. I'm not sure why I did not uh, start the frame rate counter so we could not measure the lows. Oh, I'm still near this, apparently. Anyway, I mean, it, it still gives you an idea, right? Uh, you can see the frame time graph is very inconsistent. We're getting a very low uh, frame rates there, or much lower frame rates anyway, and uh, definitely <laughs> not a very good experience. I know this is not the most perfect way to test only e cores because you can see the P cores still have some load, but I don't think it's game load because the affinity is set to e cores only. It might be some game load spilling over, but even if it is, it's uh, really not that much. It's, you can see the P-Cores are sitting at around 67% uh, CPU usage there. Uh, anyway, getting around 110, 120 frames per second, give or take, and that's uh, quite a, a big drop from what we had previously. But anyway, let's move on to the next game. All right, and our next game, or second last game, I should say, is Spider-Man Remastered. Yeah, we are at 1440p on the very high preset, just with anisotropic filtering set to 16. DLSS quality and ray tracing is enabled, and yeah, you can see we're getting around 120 frames per second. This is typically how I play this game, except I do enable frame generation as well, and then I just enable VSync in, in video control panel to lock the frame rate to 158 for my 165 hertz panel. So let's see what happens once we actually disable the P cores. So in this exact same spot, we lost around 30 frames per second, 30 to 40 frames per second. Let's uh, swing around a little bit. Let's see what the stuttering is like. I did uh, enable ray tracing, as I said earlier, just because uh, contrary to popular belief, it actually increases the load on the CPU quite a bit uh, in this uh, game, at least. So <laughs> you can see our uh, stuttering is quite, uh, quite heavy here. Now, the game is not stutter free even with the, the P cores enabled, but it never drops uh, to the 5, uh, you see there for the 0.1% lows. All in all, the game is definitely playable. Uh, once again, I, I see no real world use for, <laughs> for this config at all. Uh, just doing this for fun and uh, I mean, I've explained this, uh, this uh, setup before, but you can see here, um, I mean, 60 frames per second on the average, not terrible, but our 0.1% and 1% loads are sitting at uh, 4 and 13 respectively, and <laughs> that makes for a very uh, terrible playing experience. All right, uh, that's going to be our second last game, as I said. Let's move on to Starfield, which will be the last one, and uh, then that'll be the end of this video. And lastly, we've got Starfield, as mentioned earlier, and uh, we're rating at 1440p on the high preset with the LSS set to quality. Uh, once again, I, I use real world settings. This is how I play the game, just with frame generation enabled once again. And uh, just for testing, I did not enable frame generation because we want to see what the CPU raw performance is like. And uh, yeah, getting around 100 frames per second. So let's see how it does without the P cores. And we lost around 40 frames per second. <laughs> You'll see the game actually does freeze quite a bit, just like uh, Cyberpunk 2077. And uh, the next the section here, it's actually not an edit. The game actually hung here, and then it, ah, there we go. <laughs> like, that's not an edit at all. So, <laughs> definitely not a playable experience here. The game is very CPU bound in these uh, cities, at least. And getting, I mean, the. The average frame rate once again is is not terrible, right? Uh, or the the current frame rate sitting at around 60, but our 0.1 percent and there we go again. Our 1 percent and 0.1 percent are sitting at zero. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually the first time I've, I've seen that. Anyway, um, there, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I know, once again, it's useless info. I just thought it would be fun. So hopefully you found it fun too. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you in the next one.